Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dave Nadler with the National Weather Service in Peachtree City, Atlanta, uh, conducting a uh, briefing on what is now Hurricane Francine and its impacts to north and central Georgia over the next couple of days. This briefing was conducted at a little after 1 p.m. today, which is Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. So here are the main highlights, and again, um, focusing on the uh, threats and impacts from Francine over the next 48 hours across north and central Georgia. Francine is expected to make landfall on the Louisiana coast later this evening. And, and then as it tracks north across Mississippi uh, tomorrow into early Friday, uh, we do expect rain and some gusty winds to increase across north and central Georgia. In addition to that, um, some of the outer rain bands could produce a few tornadoes, mainly uh, looking at up across parts of western Georgia, generally west of I-75, I would think be the the primary concern for any tornadic activity. Again, these are tropical cyclone tornadoes, so um, generally they'll be brief and, and um, fairly weak, but um, still still a threat to uh, consider. Um, and again, we with, there's a little bit of uncertainty about um, once the remnants of Francine sort of fade off, there's still some uh, upper level energy that could um, prolong rainfall uh, through the weekend across the area and in the, even into early part of next week. So um, just keep an eye on that. Um, for now, just looking at the next 48 hours through Friday um, and even into early Saturday, our main concern is going to be the amounts of rain that we could get, um, which could lead to some localized flooding. Um, we've obviously been really dry, um, generally speaking, over the last few weeks. So the soils are, are pretty dry and we'll be able to absorb a lot of the rain that we do get out of this system. Um, but nonetheless, um, some of the more flood prone areas could become problematic as we go through tomorrow night and into Friday. Um, we do expect the winds to pick up, um, gusting uh, over 20 to 30 miles per hour at times. Um, not a major concern, um, but if it, it lingers for six, seven, eight, nine hours of, of this kind of wind, um, some of the trees um, could get uh, pushed down a little bit. Um, River flooding should be pretty limited at best, and again, the tornado threat um, is localized um, for areas uh, primarily along and west of I-75. So here's the latest National Hurricane Center forecast. Um, <clears throat> between about 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time, um, you can see where Francine is approaching the Louisiana coast and expected to move north-northeast. Um, right now, it's about a, 180 miles southwest of New Orleans, moving northeast at 13 miles per hour. That's the center of the storm. <clears throat> Max sustained winds of 90 miles per hour. Francine is expected to strengthen slightly just before landfall uh, to around a 100 miles per hour. Um, and that would take it into a low-end Category 2 hurricane. But Francine is then expected to weaken pretty quickly overnight through the day Thursday as it tracks north across Mississippi. Um, in the next 24 to 36 hours. Now, again, the potential impacts to north and central Georgia, the rainfall um, could lead to some localized flooding or flash flooding, especially uh, over areas that could see three to four plus inches of rain over the next 48 hours. So we'll be watching that closely. Um, again, that's a localized uh, threat, definitely not widespread, um, but something where rainfall and, and some localized flooding will be our primary concern. The winds picking up. Um, could be a, an issue only because of the um, just the risk of some of the trees being sort of stressed out recently because it's been so dry. Add in the rain, add in the wind, um, maybe we could see a few more trees that get knocked down um, in this kind of a wind uh, field uh, versus usual. So, and then of course the there, there are uh, there's the potential for a few tornadoes mainly west of I-75 tomorrow, uh, late tomorrow through uh, Friday uh, afternoon. We'll talk about that here in a second. Um, the models are, are definitely in pretty good consensus and agreement, taking uh, the center of Francine north and then eventually curving it back to the northwest toward like Memphis and Arkansas, northeast Arkansas, southern Missouri, and then kind of dissipating it over the next 48 hours, becoming sort of an extra tropical low um, in the next 48 hours or so. So, um, And also um, it'll you know weaken um, in a sense of like the intensity. So. Their confidence is pretty good that, that that's what Francine is not expected to necessarily track over Georgia, but it doesn't matter. We're still going to get the um, uh, potential weather hazards and impacts across the area. The latest satellite and radar showing you um, on the left, the uh, center of, of uh, not, not necessarily showing like an eye feature, 
Um, on radar, you can see it um, down there off the off the Louisiana coast, but the satellite um, still pretty good um, development and organization around the center of the of Francine right now. The radar, we've got some very very light precip starting to move into parts of central Georgia. There's a lot of that's not even reaching the ground along I I uh, 85 um, to the south of Atlanta. But over the next you know six to 12, 18 hours, um, the moisture is going to deepen. The rainfall is going to start to you know increase across the area from the south and southwest. <clears throat> so speaking of rainfall, this is what we're expecting over the next um, basically 24 to 36 hours through like Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Um, we do think most of the area is going to get anywhere from one to two inches um, through Friday evening with locally higher amounts, uh, possibly up to three or four inches in spots, just depending on where some of the heavier uh, rain bands set up. And there's a little bit, of course, of uncertainty into that at the moment as far as exact location. Um, but generally speaking, like we should be able to um, receive these amounts of rain over the next uh, one to two days and not see any sort of widespread flooding issues. But um, if one area gets hit a little bit harder with more repetitive heavy rainfall, of course, the, the flood potential may go up a little bit. Now, this is the probability on the left of seeing more than two inches of rain uh, through Friday night um, through 8 a.m. Saturday. Um, we've got a few areas, especially uh, along the I-85 corridor and south of I-20 over west, west central and southwest parts of the area. Um, that are over 60%. So again, we, we we could see some, no surprise that some areas after this is all said and done, we'll get over two inches. Now, anyone over four inches, the probability goes down to between, between like 10 and 20%. So it's, it's non-zero, but it's pretty low um, for getting more than four inches at this point. Now this could change a little bit, uh, but generally speaking, we don't expect many areas to approach three or four inches at this point. Um, some, there's a little bit more uncertainty as to how much additional rainfall we'll get on Saturday, um, Saturday evening. Um, some of the models are um, predicting um, sort of a um, uh, like a remnant boundary um, or low-level convergence zone sort of set up sort of northwest to southeast across the area um, with moisture uh, in place, a little bit of uh, daytime heating. We could see some redevelopment of shower and thunderstorm activity on Saturday. It does shift more to the north northeast versus the west southwest, um, but generally looking at the storm totals through Saturday, that increases the overall amounts across parts of northeast and east central Georgia to between two and three, upwards of four inches um, by Saturday before everything um, sort of kicks out and most of the moderate to heavier rainfall uh, diminishes um, by the first part of the weekend. Now looking at winds, uh, we do expect widespread wind gusts in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range with pockets of 30 to 40 at times. Um, again, these are gusts. We're not expecting this widespread um, prolonged period of 30 to 40 mile an hour winds at all. But at times, especially with the heavier rain bands that come through, we could see the, the higher wind gusts move through as well. So just be mindful that, you know, generally speaking, we're probably going to be in that 20 to 30 mile an hour wind gust range beginning uh, late tonight into tomorrow and continuing through early Friday. Um, but with some of the some of the outer rain bands, the heavier rain bands moving through those gusts could be um, locally higher for a short period of time. Um, here's the radar simulation. Uh, we've got, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the tornadic threat. This is basically looking at tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours and then overnight Thursday night. Um, if you look across, um, parts of Alabama and into western Georgia early in the period, which would be like Thursday afternoon. Some of the heavier pockets where you see the deeper red, oranges, and red colors, um, that's where we could see um, a little bit better convection um, with the low-level wind energy in place, the shear as we talk about. Um, that's where we could see some rotation and maybe some brief tornadoes. So coming into parts of west Georgia, again, west, generally west of I-75, um, and then pushing west into Alabama is the area we're going to have to watch um, as these uh, more organized bands of, of rainfall approach from Francine as Francine moves inland later tonight into tomorrow. Here's the SBC outlook. Um, looks fairly reasonable. I'll probably would stretch that marginal darker green uh, all the way to Atlanta um, and Macon. Uh, but again, if you're anywhere from, down, from Atlanta down to Macon, uh, even south and southeast of Macon to, and then points west 
uh, towards the Alabama state line, I'd, I'd just be prepared for um, some rotation with some of these stronger cells that move through late tomorrow um, and then through Thursday night and again on Friday. We'll just um, keep an eye on that. It's a little uncertain as to if we go under any sort of watch at this point, um, but just be be prepared in addition to the rainfall and the increasing wind that there could be a um, we could be issuing a few tornado warnings with uh, these cells as they uh, approach uh, from the south. So in summary, again, um, Francine is expected to make landfall as a low end category two hurricane um, later this evening as it tracks north across Mississippi um, Thursday into early Friday. We do expect rain and some gusty winds to increase across parts of north and central Georgia, just about all of north and central Georgia. Um, a few brief tornadoes will also be possible, again, mainly across West Georgia, west of I-75, um, if any of the stronger rain bands move across late Thursday afternoon through Friday. And then after all that, we, we could see this lingering rain threat into the weekend. Um, even after, you know, Francine has sort of fallen apart, there is going to be a remnant low um, with enough moisture and some daytime heating to produce um, some additional shower and thunderstorm activity as we head into uh, Saturday and even into Sunday. So. Um, we'll keep uh, everybody up to date on this through our email updates. Um, don't anticipate us doing any sort of special webinars at this point, um, but uh, if we do another briefing like this, uh, which is recorded, we will, of course, share that with everybody via email. But these are the different ways that you could reach out to us and connect with us. Um, otherwise, thanks for uh, listening to this briefing. Be safe out there and have a good rest of the day.